E90 Maintenance Minute, we are going to remove and install the main fuel oil heat exchanger. Fortunately, we can drain fuel away from the heat exchanger right here at the fuel filter drain plug. Uh, when it comes to the oil, though, we're not quite so lucky. Okay, now I'm removing the oil in and out tubes from the top of the heat exchanger. You'll definitely want to have a five gallon or so bucket ready for this. There is no way to drain the oil system before we do this step, so uh, we're going to be draining these lines at least uh, into a five gallon bucket. It's important to note too that if you're performing this procedure on a preserved engine, <clears throat> that's fine. As long as we immediately cap and plug all these openings and, uh, and try to keep the, uh, the oil loss to a minimum, uh, we can do this on a preserved engine as well. Our gasket seals have come out. Before we go back in with these, we'll clean them and inspect them, make sure they're, uh, they're okay for reuse. Altogether, there are eight nuts securing the heat exchanger to the accessory gearbox uh, fuel adapter pad. Uh, first, we'll remove the six back here around the actual fuel in, fuel out flange itself. And then we save these two for last, uh, one here and then again down here uh, with this bracket. Okay, as I remove this last nut, I'm going to make sure I'm holding the heat exchanger against the, uh, the fuel adapter pad. And the key thing to remember here is we drain these oil lines into our five gallon bucket. The heat exchanger itself is still probably full of oil, which uh, means it can weigh up to close to 30 pounds. And it's like holding a, a scuba tank. It's not the most uh, uh, easy thing to, uh, it's not the easiest thing to grab onto. So we're gonna come off the studs of the gearbox. And we're going to keep these fuel in and out ports up. We don't want this thing to, uh, to slip in our hands and then splash oil on us. And here we have it. Okay, and of course before we install our serviceable heat exchanger, we're going to need to install our seals. AMM says to put a thin coat of engine oil on them and simply push them into position. There we go. Before we install the heat exchanger, we're going to take a nice clean cotton wiper and make sure this mating flange and all these bores are nice and clean and free of contaminants. And I'm also going to point out to you, while we have the heat exchanger removed, because you can actually see uh, these mounting studs now, uh, Installation of the heat exchanger is basically just reversing the removal process, but when we go to torque the nuts on the heat exchanger, the AMM will want us to go in a crisscross torque pattern, and these studs are actually numbered. They want us to go one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll go up to an initial torque, and then we'll up the torque per the AMM, and we'll do the same thing again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then finally, we'll install and, uh, and double torque uh, the nuts of these studs here as well. Installation, it's basically just reversing the procedure. We'll guide ourselves into position. And up onto the studs. Like so. And I'm tightening just by hand for now the last of the eight nuts. Just snug by hand until you feel a little resistance. There we go. And now we'll get our torque wrench and we'll do our, our crisscross pattern of the double torque specified by the AMM. Lastly, we will have inspected our gasket seals for reuse here at the oil in and out lines. Um, if you don't know what that entails, there is another maintenance minute that details how to inspect a gasket seal. One more thing I want to point out is the installation of these gasket seals. We've performed our inspection and everything passes so we could reuse this gasket seal. The correct way to install these is get everything lined up and in position and then start your four bolts by hand. Where we sometimes cause ourselves problems out in the field 
is we'll put the gasket seal in position, we'll start a bolt through the flange, run it down kind of snug, and then they'll push the gasket seal into position. We don't want to do that. When we, when we force that gasket seal into position beneath the flange, more often than not, it will tear up the sealing material. So we want everything in position, properly aligned, and then we install our bolts. Okay, so I've run my four bolts down by hand. Now I'm just gonna snug them down, get them into a position where we're ready to apply an actual torque value. Even as I'm doing this, notice I'm tightening these bolts in a crisscross pattern. Anytime you have a fluid line flange like this, four bolts, six bolts, whatever, always tighten in a crisscross pattern. There we go, now they're just snug. And now we'll repeat the process with the torque wrench and go to whatever value the AMM indicates. Okay, those are some of the finer points of removing and reinstalling the main fuel oil heat exchanger. I hope you enjoyed the maintenance minute and I'll see you next time.